506 on this Tuesday. It's the KRMG Evening News. I'm Skyler Cooper. If you are a regular here, you know that this time every Tuesday we check in with Broken Arrow. Uh, usually it's the city manager, Michael Spurgeon. He has today off, so we're going to check in with assistant city manager of operations, Kenny Schwab. Kenny, uh, welcome back to the show. Well, uh, thank you, Skyler. I uh, appreciate being here. Hey, we want to get into a couple of things, but first, let me just ask you for a quick update on how everything is going in Broken Arrow as far as getting the roads cleared out. I live in BA. Um, I know neighborhoods are kind of the last place you can get. My neighborhood's a mess, but once I get out on the city streets, it's all looking pretty good. I would imagine that that's only been uh, made a little bit better throughout the day today. Uh, you pretty much nailed it. Uh, our crews come in and uh, work the streets. Um, 12 hour shifts. They're on 12 hour shifts. So, big shout out to the street crews. Rocky Hinkle and Tim Wilson do a great job in that department. Um, we pre treat, uh, I'm going to say about 10 o'clock, 9 o'clock on Sunday night. We came in and did our pre treatment first. That goes a long ways. That helps break up that bond between the, the sleet and ice to the pavement. Uh, allows us to uh, plow that when it, you know, we have an opportunity. So we did that first thing on Sunday. Um, the second wave that came in probably you know, middle of the morning on Monday starts refreezing, and uh, as soon as that breaks up, we go back right at it. I know there is another chance tomorrow night. It's, it's one of those tricky ones because it might be rain to freezing rain, and I've heard a lot that you can't really pre-treat in that situation. Is that what you're looking at? Uh, you're actually right. If it's ice is on the ground, you basically are just going to have to put salt or sand to, to give traction. Um, if it's already broken up, right now our arterial streets here in Broken Arrow, we actually did some plowing again, and the pavement, you know, the traffic has uh, broken down a lot of the ice. So we have an opportunity to come back in and do some pretreatment, specifically at the bridges, um, you know, those hard areas that we always see a lot of icing. I know that there's another impact in this because today, uh, Tuesday, is my normal trash day, but I got the notice that that's not happening. Uh, sort of just put everything on hold for today. How will you pick up everything that's been delayed? Uh, we will go to that first thing tomorrow, start uh, picking up what we left off at on Monday. We got about 75% of it. Just like I talked about that second wave of sleet and ice mix that came in Monday, really uh, hampered our crews. I mean, they were bundled up. They had their cleats on. Um, once we got it all picked up, we went to our inclement weather routes, which means we're doing recycling and solid waste all in one vehicle. We're trying to minimize exposure to the employees out there. Um, but we actually got into lines when we, we take it to the landfill, and maneuvering in and out of the landfill is very difficult with the sleet and ice. So we will start with uh, where we left off and then pick up um, today, Tuesday. We'll actually pick them up tomorrow and Wednesday. All right. So everybody slides back one day. Um, now, I want to talk about something else that I saw on the uh, city's Facebook page. And this reminds me, a couple of months ago, I got a letter uh, like I said, I live in BA, and there was a particular address highlighted, or a, at least a street in my neighborhood was highlighted. And it had something to do with a, a call to a public meeting about short-term rental um, applications, I believe. And I, I took this to be the Airbnb and, and Verbo type things. I see now that the city is pausing new short-term rental applications. Is that what we're talking about, like Airbnb situations? Yes, very similar to that. So you can see homes in a residential uh, neighborhood. They can go to short-term rentals right now under our ordinance. And short-term rentals is anything less than 30 days. So if you're actually going to uh, rent out a house for 60 days, that is not short term. It could be just a matter of days, a week, kind of like a vacation, just like you said, the Airbnbs. So the council um, decided to put a moratorium on that on the January 17th meeting for 120 days to give us an opportunity to look into some of the challenges and some of the uh, concerns that residents have raised. Can you share some of those? I mean, I, I have one of these on my street, I think, and it may just be far enough away that I've not encountered any problems with them, but I, I can see where that could happen. You know, maybe some people come in, they have parties or what have you. That That's one of the concerns that was raised is how do you monitor the, the parties? One of the other thing is density. So let's say you live in a, a subdivision like you're talking about. 
how many um, homes can be rented out at the same time on that that block. You could be changing the fabric of that subdivision. Um, so those are a lot of the questions that have been brought up. One of the questions brought up was something about you know background checks. Is there something that can be done there? License. Uh, what type of license is required? So the council decided let's put a 120-day moratorium on it. Let's get some um, background. Let's check into this. Let's bring some information back. Uh, let's see what some of the other communities are doing as well. And then let's make a, a better educated decision for our, our citizens. We're talking with Kenny Schwab, the assistant city manager of operations for Broken Arrow. Uh, Michael Spurgeon is off today. We're normally chatting with him at this time. Kenny, are you familiar and up to speed with the New Orleans Square construction? I'm very familiar with that, sir. Okay. We've talked about it a lot here, but we just got this question from a listener, so I thought I'd let you answer her question. This from the open mic on the KRMG app. Are they going to be okay. fixing also the potholes at 101st and Elm in the New Orleans Square? I don't think you plan on leaving any potholes. <laughs> we plan on, uh, if it's on the arterial, we're fixing it. If the uh, potholes are actually uh, on the property, so the parking lot paving, uh, you know, where you're, you're parking your vehicles, that's actually private property, uh, and we can work with those property owners. Uh, she's probably actually referring to that. But on the street itself, yes, we will be fixing this. Okay. Yeah, it's looking pretty good, that intersection. I know we'll have uh, well, some updates as we get a little closer. And next week, we'll talk with Michael Spurgeon about the Innovation District, some really cool stuff happening out there. Kenny, I thank you for filling in. And if you want to pull his leg a little, just tell Mr. Spurgeon <laughs> that you're going to do this full time now. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Scott. I appreciate it.